Hello and welcome back to TT Isle of Man right on the edge 3 and today we're here checking out the career mode. Now before we do get into the video I do once again want to say a big thanks to Deadcode Media for providing me with a code for the game. It is really really appreciated but without any further ado let's get into it and let's see what events we've got. So on the map screen, you can see all the different things that we do need to do. So we've got eight qualifiers, eight races, then we've got one qualifying for the actual TT, and then the TT itself. The blue ones, I believe, are challenges that we can do at any point, so it's the orange ones that we do need to aim for. And I do believe you can either ride up to them, or actually select them on the map to quick travel to them. So we'll see whereabouts we are. If we're close enough to any of them, I would ride up to them, but it doesn't seem like any of them are particularly near me. So I think we will quick travel to this one then, and see what we've got to do. So then, this event is at the Southwest Course, Section 2. It's an unofficial qualifying event, so you need to set the best time to be placed in the highest position for the next race event. So it's just a qualifying session. I guess it's a bit more like an actual TT, isn't it, this one, doing the, the time trials. I think we might get a practice session as well, but I'm not 100% sure. It did mention something about a practice session. But we'll get straight into it now then and see how we get on, because I think we're going to struggle. It's going to take a while to get used to these tracks. So it does seem like we have actually got a free practice session, so I will head out onto the track, maybe try and learn it a little bit, but I don't want to spend too much time doing free practice. It's not actually worth anything. So just to actually know the corners to some extent. Also to kind of figure out how long the track is would be quite handy. We've got half an hour's worth. I don't think I'll be doing half an hour, that's for sure. So one thing I do need to mention here is that we've still got automatic gears on for this episode. Because it is actually a bug in the game that wouldn't allow us to shift up off the line previously. So to avoid that, I've just got automatic gears on, unfortunately. But uh, apparently the developers are fixing it. So if there is a patch put out to fix that... Then I'll definitely go back to manual and we've already crashed in free practice. So that's an amazing start, wouldn't you say? Oh, I also want to say thank you to the person that in the comments let me know about turning on the opponent names in the settings. I thought it kind of would probably be on by default. So I assumed there probably wouldn't be an option for it, but there is. So we have got the riders' names above the heads for this episode. Seems to be a few frame drops in this section here with all the trees. I did see online that some people saying there's quite a few frame drops when you get into the, uh, the sort of foresty sections. So... I do apologise if the frame rate's a little bit inconsistent in this video. Not much I can do about it. So actually the second part went pretty well. I think I didn't really fall off through this section, which is pretty good. So that should help us when we actually get into the qualifier session. I actually know the track to some extent now. Not too bad at all. So I think we'll probably skip this session now, get into qualifying, and see what kind of lap time we can do. So yeah, I was 11 seconds off. I was in last place, but I did fall off quite a few times. So if I could try and avoid that, then we'd probably right up there with the AI to be fair. Right, so here we go then. I think we actually do have multiple attempts at this. I was actually thinking that we only had one, but it does seem like we have got a full half an hour just like we did in the practice session. So let's throw... I'll say throw everything at it. Uh, try and sell on the bike actually probably would be the number one objective. I do also apologise for having to have the racing line on, but of course I have no idea where any of these tracks go. Obviously some of them will be fictional as well. There's nothing to really uh, base them on. So for now I'll keep the racing line on. Maybe if I get a bit further into the career mode and start to learn the tracks, perhaps I'll have it off, but... For now, I'll just keep it on because, well, I'm going to have no idea where to break otherwise. No no breaking boards like I'm used to to use. It's one of these things where I'm trying to keep an eye on the map as well at the same time. It's uh, pretty tricky. I thought we were going to crash there. Get away from the grass. Come on, come on, come on. I've gone too fast through this section. Come on, get away from the curb. Yes, yes. It seems to be not too bad so far. We're going to crash here though, I think. Actually, no. So, uh, I've made it quite far so far without crashing. I'm quite actually quite pleased with myself, to be honest. I shouldn't be this pleased. Shouldn't be crashing that much, especially since, you know, all I do is play bike games, but, uh... Oh, get off the curb! Come on, come on, come on! And... Ah, oh, I thought we were just going to get away with that one. thought we'd got away with that up the grass verge. Well, let's keep going. We might still be able to do something decent with only one crash, but I've just got to try to stay on. And not fall off again. Okay, I've just lost the front. That was a bit bizarre. I think the front wheel might have come off the ground slightly at a bit of lean angle, because I picked up the throttle. So, that one wasn't actually me hitting something, so... It's not quite as bad. I've got AI that have closed up quite a bit behind as well, so uh, I don't think we'll be. Don't think this will be a pole position. Let's put it that way. God, that's quite a high speed section. We managed to sort of keep that bit together. Here we go. I think we're right towards the end now. I think it's just sort of a bit more of a stretch to the line now, a little curve. I think that's it, if I remember correctly. Oh no 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 no! We've gone way too fast through there. I'm a bit overconfident. We did pull quite a bit on AI there though, uh, through that section. Which I guess makes sense, because they are on pretty low difficulty, but to be honest, I've got them on a low difficulty to compensate for the fact that I'm going to be making lots of mistakes, especially when it comes to the races. Obviously qualifying, I probably could do a few laps and try again, and... Oh, come on. So we'll see. I don't know where that's going to put me. Obviously, it could be quite a bit off the other guys. 
If I go live session, I am 16 seconds off the top time. So actually even worse than I was in practice. So yeah, not ideal. But I think actually, to be honest, if we stay on the bike, I actually think we've got the pace here. This is just the qualifying as well. I think we've still got the whole race to do after this one. So hitting the brakes for turn one. I do like these hairpin star corners, I must say, because the, the braking's quite fun. Because you can brake a lot later than you think. You can really ram on the brakes in this game. Oh! I had another wheelie through a corner. Ah, oh, come on. To be fair, I'll probably be here all day if I actually try and uh, make it all the way to the end of this course. I have just realised whilst I'm probably wheeling a little bit more because... It seems like in the career mode, I've not got so much of the uh, the assists on the, well, not the assist, the electronic sort of aids on the right hand side. So I guess that's part of the upgrade system because there's an upgrade system in this game. You can upgrade the bike throughout your career mode. So I guess maybe we'll unlock some of uh, the electronic settings as we go through. It seems like I can only adjust traction control at the moment. We go for a pass. That was, yeah, great. Uh, yeah, that was a bit silly from myself there, but he was going quite slow. So I had to try and pass him, but... I think that's pretty much just ruined this lap again. At least, though, at least it is showing that we do have some speed against AI. Obviously, I pulled away from those other ones before. And obviously, I caught up to that guy. So, it does seem like we've got at least some sort of speed. Just no consistency whatsoever. Here we go. Come on, just through this last corner. This last little kink. Can we do it? Up towards the line, little roll. It's actually a lot tighter than it looks like on the map. Oh, towards the line, we did it without crashing. And that is pole position. At least for now, anyway. Let's see what the time is like. Yeah, six seconds on top. So, like I said, the AI probably a bit low when I actually managed to keep on the bike. But I tell you what, that was quite hard. Took me a few attempts. But we have managed to do it. So I think that's that event done. I don't know when the race actually is for it. Because I think it's a qualifying, then a race. So there we are then, six seconds ahead of Connor Cummins in second and Michael Dunlop in third. Like I said, the AI obviously is a little bit low, but I'm just trying to play about with it. It's probably not too far off because six seconds is not unreasonable on a road course, in fairness. There is some massive gaps between them, especially when you start 10 seconds apart as well. Probably would anyone be wanting to go up a few percent, and that's probably one of the easier tracks as well, that one. For the, the harder tracks, it might be about right. So we've gone up to experience level two. We've got 45 upgrade points as well. It's nice. So we'll look at the map. So that's one qualifying event done. There is now a race event. So I don't know if we start on pole for this race event now. So yeah, we're sort of jumping across now to a completely different circuit. But the, the grid is based on the qualifying event we just did, which is how I thought it worked. Because I saw online that's how it worked, apparently. A little bit strange, to be honest, because why would you qualify at one track and then go and do another one? But whatever, I guess there's another track to learn now. And like I said, I think the AI being a bit slow is probably going to help us out a bit, but... To be honest, qualifying is not going to matter that much the amount of times we're going to be on the floor. So here we are then on the grip. We're getting straight into it. That was a no build-up whatsoever there. Lights out and away we go. We've we've looped it. We've looped it off the line. That is probably the issue with having the clutch just mapped to a button. But that is how it is by default. We've got the rider names back on again now. So I don't know why it wasn't there in that qualifying session. But we're already not last. We've already overtaken a couple of people. We've got Gary Johnson in front of us. Can we try and pass Gary? This one actually looks a bit more wide and open. Uh, less trees and stuff, which is... It's great, should be a bit easier to pick up. Is that Hillier in front of us now on the OMG Yamaha? Looks like it. So we are being told to break, so I will try and break. Good job, I did slow down. I, oh, and I'm still going off the edge. I'm still going off the edge, didn't slow down nearly enough. I did completely ignore the slowdown warning, to be fair. I just thought that AI weren't slowing down that much, so I was like, you know what, I'll, I'll risk it a bit more. Perhaps should have looked at the map and realised just how tight the corner was. But in fairness, the map is a bit deceiving sometimes. I found, I found that in the qualifying event as well. I come up to a corner and I think, ah, oh, you know what, I could probably just about keep it pinned through there. Then you actually get there and you're like, oh, I need to break, not just a little roll. We've got 11 kilometers to go, so we've got plenty of time to try and make up the time on the AI in front. Although it clocks down quickly, because we're already down to about 10. So it's like a pretty tight section coming up here. Does indeed. We're behind Xavier Dennis now. We're onto the back of the AI. So side by side with Xavier Dennis. Can we get him? I think we are. I think, well, we've virtually got him. Then it's Raul Martinez in front of us. So can we take a bit more speed through here than him? Uh, just about. Can we try and... Oh, this is going to be close. This is going to be close. So let's keep it in front for now. It's difficult to actually get past him because obviously it's so narrow, even though I'm a bit quicker than him. I think we've done it now, though. We're up into P8. Watch the front end. There we go. Beautiful corner. This is definitely more my style of track. It does feel a bit more flowing, a bit wider. Definitely a bit easier than the last one. Well, so far anyway, there's still plenty of it to go. Right, so we're just about catching up to the next pack of riders ahead. Oh, don't go off the cliff! Oh, I thought I was going to go off the cliff. So we're back behind Gary Johnson again. There is a really tight hairpin coming up though, so we do need to watch out for that one. Did actually get to see that advanced on the map there. Did have a little look because we're on a bit of a straight. Into the hairpin we go. 
just about done that right. Oh, so close to the wall. We've got five kilometers to go, so we are running out of time. We need to try and make up a few positions here. I don't think we're going to win the race, but we could still get a podium looking by the number of riders in front. But it's difficult to pass because of how tight it is. So here we go, past Gary Johnson on the straight. So we do have a little bit more speed. The slipstream effect doesn't seem very strong, though. Uh, I remember someone in the comments asking about that in the last video about the slipstream, and I wasn't 100% sure because I hadn't particularly done enough racing to find out. But you can see in the slipstream here of Hillier, we're not really gaining on him whatsoever. We're only really gaining probably just because the AI of it's on the straights, not because of the slipstream. But here we are then, up the inside of Helia. Oh, you know what? You know what? We got away with that one because we've just gone up the curb to try and avoid him. Can we go around the outside of this hill? I'm a bit, you know, tentative about going too fast through sections where it's telling me to slow down. Oh, this is risky. Oh, oh no. I've cut the curb. Dan, I've gone. And Hillier's back through once again. We are still P8 though. But I reckon we probably want to do this one again. Although I think you just have to complete them. I don't think you actually have to win. So I might take the 8th place. But I must say, this track definitely was a lot easier than the last one. And I've gone down again. <laughs> Great. So just as I said it was easier, I've crashed and I've finished last. i tell you what, perhaps we will restart it. Give it another go so that we don't finish in last place. And yeah, well, at least I know, know about that hairpin now. That one caught me off guard. So then, this time I just need to try not to loop it off the line. Actually get a decent start. Away we go. Well, it's bogged, but that's better than it looping. So we're already down to second place. Connor Cummins has taken the lead. But at least we're not down to 11th this time. So it's definitely an improvement as we go through the first corner trying to carry the speed. Can we get back past Connor? I think we can, actually. So we've retaken the lead then. McGuinness hits the front here. But I'll tell you what, it's probably going to be a bit more difficult this time without following the AI. Although I do at least know where it's going to go. And I need to be careful for this corner. Remember last time I went in way too hot. And this time, I've just about done it. I've just about done it correctly there. So we're in the lead. Not gone off the edge this time. So that's two of the crashes already eliminated from the previous attempt. And in fairness, I did a pretty decent job around the rest of it. So if I can just try and keep that one up, should be all right. I think there's been a crash with the AI behind. By the looks of it, I think they're all down. I think they've all gone down together. Uh, I heard uh, a bit of a sound and then they've all gone off the map and they all look like they were stopped. So I think the AI might have had a bit of an accident. Which is uh, good for me, I guess. It's given me a pretty big lead, so I can probably afford a crash now. But through one of the right-handers, I saw sort of the lead rider was stopped, and they all seem to be stopped. So, yeah, I think uh, I think we might have a bit of a lead now. I might have to have a look on the replay after to see what happened. I must say, it's a lot easier not having the AI here. I thought that should be more difficult, but I don't have to actually watch for the AI. So on the straights, I can purely look at the map and see what's coming next. Whereas, obviously, previously, I was battling the AI, so I needed to look at them. And then the corners are sort of surprising me, but I can actually have a good look at the, the map now, because there's a lot of sections where you are flat out in this game. That is definitely uh, one thing, at least on the 600s anyway. On the superbikes, of course, those sections come a lot faster. But because we're doing the 600 career mode, the bikes are maxed out for quite a lot of these tracks. Thought I was going to hit a lamppost then. <laughs> Turned in a little bit too early. We're coming towards the end of the lap now by the looks of it. Just a kilometre to go few tight corners so we do need to watch out for those that weird roundabout corner that we came up to earlier as well it's telling me to break really early for it which is probably about right because i think what you actually have to do is go around this section not around the actual roundabout so it's pretty tight and i've hit the wall i've hit the stone wall but fortunately we had enough of a lead that's not a problem whatsoever so they are a little bit behind now but we've only got 700 meters so as long as we can just get up towards the line now then we're going to take our first career win Maybe we do need to adjust the AI setting a little bit, or maybe I just need to not restart if I've got them on a lower setting to make it a bit more fair. But there we go then, pole and race win. What a weekend for John McGuinness. So in the end then, we won by 12 seconds. Obviously that was a, with a crash for the AI. A crash for myself as well, so I guess it was one all. So I guess you could say that on pace, I do probably have a bit of an unfair advantage. So they were on 55% this time. I think I might up them to 60 for the next episode to make it a little bit more balanced and maybe i'll try and avoid as many restarts but i think i've i think i've got to be fair to myself because there's no rewinds in this game i need to give myself at least two chances to do the track i can't be doing one and that's it because you don't really get any practice for this for example obviously we got a practice for the qualifying but for the actual race we didn't we just went straight into a race so yeah you're just kind of going blind into the races which does make it fairly difficult but we'll have a little look at the replay then to see what happened with that crash if we can at least anyway so there we are then, we're on board with the shock absorber, the back camera, we can have a bit of a look at what happened with the AI into the right-hander. And, uh, no, it did, actually they didn't crash at all. They just, they just said, what are they doing? What? what? They're just weaving from one side of the road to the other. 
Then there was actually no pilot behind. I did hear like it sort of go quiet. So that's what I meant by I sort of heard something, but I guess there was no actual accident. They just started weaving for some reason. I, if I could get a better look at it, then I, then I would. But very bizarre. So that was a pretty strange one then. That's what the AI were doing. Don't have any idea why they were doing that, but. Either way, we may as well continue and collect our rewards for this race. So we've gone up to experience level 3 and we've got 50 upgrade points, which takes us up to 95 now. And here we are then back into the free roam. But I think this is where we'll leave it for this episode. We've done our first qualifying, done our first race event. So I hope you guys did enjoy that one. I will probably up the difficulty for the next episode, like I said up at a few percent just keep upping it as i get better i think that's probably the most fair and fun way to do it and i'll try and limit the restarts also as well but i didn't want it to be a poor result or whatever at the start of the career mode and also it's a little bit unfair for me to just turn up to a track i've never done and then have to do a race at it immediately but like i said i hope you guys did enjoy that one once again a big thanks to dead god media for providing me with a review code for this game it really is appreciated let me know if you want to see some more of the career mode of this let me know if there's anything i can do as well to try and improve a little bit because obviously i'm not the best at road racing as you can see with me going off the cliff even in my outro but before i embarrass myself further then we'll end it there so i hope you guys have enjoyed that one i hope you enjoy the rest of your day hope you'll stay safe and i shall see you in the next one